All right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to work on these pliers. They remind me of dinosaur. Somebody told them they're slip joint, and someone has said they're for square nuts. So, I kind of believe that because the way the jaw here is set up, it's notched, but it, there again, it's, I don't know. I think I can sharpen these a little bit. Looks like the tops wore more than the, the teeth on the top are worn more than the teeth on the bottom. Huh. Anyways, at first I was just going to throw these in Evaporust and then clean it, but I think I'm going to run them over the wire wheel because I want to see who makes them. Plus, I want to straighten the bend. See, there's, if you guys can see it, it's bent. So, I'm going to take it apart and try to straighten it up. The problem is, this is old school now. This is, they just put a washer on there and they beat this pin over. So, I'm wondering if I can get that apart without too much of a hassle. Let's see what I come up with. I want to just take a little pry here. I want to see if I can get a screwdriver. Boy, I can't get that big. If I can just get it up a little bit. enough to get under there. Hang on a second. May have to take my Dremel and just, I don't know man, that metal it doesn't look like it's square hole there. All right, let me put this in the vise and see what I can come up with. What I'm going to wind up doing, I looked under the magnifying glass, it does look kind of square. So what I'm going to do is try to gently take some, th use this cutting disc as a grinder and kind of take some of that off. Too many things at hand at one time doesn't work. Let's let's try this thing.
There we go. I may have to may have to take a little bit off the edge there. just drive through. Guess I'm wrong. Doesn't seem like there's anything there though. Somebody's wondering probably why I'm being so delicate. Number one, I've never seen a pair of pliers like these around here. So, only pair I got, and I don't want to damage them, and I'll try and save that pin, because I don't have a lathe. One, two, I don't know how to use a lathe very well. I got a general idea. So, that's what I'm doing. What the heck? Is it timed? Is it in a position where it's timed? Nah, I think it's just wedged in there. Oh, it's actually threaded. Okay, at one time, was this threaded? Huh. Well, check that out. It's worn, too. The nut has got a lot of wear on one side. Well, that stinks. I mean, I bet I can reuse this. Hang on a second. Boy, that is. I guess it's got a lot of mushroom to it. All right, we'll figure that out. First, Let's go to the wire wheel. All right. I am going to use my little 12 ton. And it's, it's bent. However you want to look at it. <laughs> I can't tell if I got it in camera, sorry. Anyways, I'm gonna try to straighten it up. 
think the bend is right about here. So, do a little bit at a time. trying to see what I'm doing and try to show you guys and it don't work. this on the on the vise but I sometimes you screw up oh yeah Pretty good. This one looks like it has a little twist in it. Maybe the other side, but I can't tell if that. Um, yeah, I think the handle, it's twisted this one. It's twisted this way. What can I do about that? For all I know, that could have been factory. Just out of curiosity. No, but I don't know. I might be screwing up right here. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. That's pretty square. I'm gonna set these in the vaporus. This metal is is different. It's old. And what I think is pitting, it's not pitting. Some of this is the way it was manufactured, forging. They didn't really care back in the day when they made some of this stuff, this, these tools were just thrown out. This is old. I'm pretty sure this is in the teen, 19-teens, 1920s. So, let's uh, stick it in Evaporust. Alright, got them out of the Evaporust and Soaked them in some uh, water to neutralize the evaporus. Now I need to go back over the wire wheel again. These things are... I thought they might have been like the pits, rust pits, but I don't think that's what a lot of this is. This is manufacturing defects, and some of it's deep, just trashy. The molding or whatever they poured in this had had a lot of defects in it because that's not pitting. Anyways, doesn't matter. Go to the wire wheel.
Yeah, I think I'm just gonna blue these. Pitting is so bad. Well, I say the pitting. I don't, I don't think a lot of this is pitting. I think some of this is manufacturing. The metal's even, I don't know, the metal's not, it's not like the best grade. How about, how about if I just say that? And it could be that, man, these things were made, these things could have been made over, well over a hundred years ago, so. I need to look these up. A gentleman told me what these were. I think Eagle square nut pliers. I got, I don't know. I gotta go double check. I'm trying to use all my carburetor cleaner up in this can. Clean this up. I don't know if this will blue very well or not, but plus I got some leftover bluing from another little project in this cup. I want to use it. And I'm getting my fingers all over it again. So, you shouldn't get your fingers, your oils from your skin back onto the metal. But you know what, on tools, I'm not really worried about it. Now, if I was doing a real high-end piece of equipment or a rifle shotgun or something, I might be a little more cautious. but I just want my clean tools. I want something very usable. And if I left it metal like this, I'm afraid that first time I ever used it, I know what I'll use this on, especially the way that's configured on the front here, on the tip, I'd use this for removing a hose clamp. And I'm sure it'll either be antifreeze or water or something like that. Man, there's a lot of a lot of black coming off of this. I think I just sprayed carburetor cleaner on top of my teacup. Guess it wouldn't be the first time I've ate it. Yeah, finally starting to clean off just a little bit. Just use a little brass on these grooves here. Oh yeah, looking good. I need to get some more of these little brushes, but gotta go to Harbor Freight. And it's cross town. And oh my God, the traffic anymore and there's stupid people and there's stupid cell phones. People can't drive without talking. I can't believe people got that many friends. There ain't no way that people could be talking to that many friends. No, they ain't talking to their kids. Cause most people around here don't like their own kids, so. I don't know what to tell you. All right, I'm gonna use the last of this stuff here. It's it's bluing that I just did uh, the hatchet head. It's contaminated. I'm gonna try and use it. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it still works. Look out! Look how quick black it turned. I think I paid three bucks for these or two bucks, something like that. These uh, these pliers I bought just because they remind me dinosaur heads, what it reminded me of. 
I just thought it was cool. Not that I needed another pair of pliers or adjustable pliers, but I do see a use for these. So, it's one thing. And that's another thing about tools, guys. You buy tools, even if you don't need it now, a year from now, six months from now, two years, ten years from now, whatever. If tools sitting in your toolbox, it's not hurting anything. And when you go to grab it and you need it, it's there. It's right there. You don't have to go to town. You don't have to drive. Some of us aren't lucky enough to live close to uh, a box store where we can buy whatever we want when we want. For me to go to a box store, I got to go 40 plus miles, 50 miles to get to one. So when I go somewhere, I'm always looking for tools. You never know, there's something out there you might need, use. I have a list, I have a list in my pocket all the time, things that I'm looking for. And if I'm not sure, I will pull my list out, take a look. Sometimes you run across things and you think, that's a good buy. This is going to turn out nice, I think. This is really going to be a good little piece. Maybe I should have took my time and... I don't know, if I would have put this on the belt sander or used a disc, uh, uh, a grinder with a disc on it, sanding disc, I think I might have taken too much metal off. Sometimes you can... And, and also, I don't care if it looks... I don't need it to look brand new. I just want it, you know, usable, functional tool that I'm not worried about rusting immediately. That's the only thing I, I, I want my tools, good usable condition. Look at that, that's all that's left. Did the axe head and then did these with that little bit of mount in there. Now it says a lot of work without drying for 60 seconds and wipe nearly dry in one pass with a clean cloth. So, and then when completely dry, burnish with one aught or finer. Steel wool. And then you can you can do this, you know, you can add more than one coat. I don't I, sometimes I've I've been able to touch some metals and it not need more than like this is turned black. This is just amazingly black see there's spots here I don't think this how, as black as this is turned I don't think it's going to need another coat I don't see a need for it getting in these crevices here I'll use the brass brush in there. And I'll use the brass brush probably on the teeth. This video may be long, but somebody might get something out of it. I hate editing. Editing's the hardest part of making the videos, guys. It sucks because you don't know what to cut out because 
you don't know if somebody might want to see that and want to know how that's done. Four out steel wool. I might just put another coat on this just to test. I'm playing. I don't have to work today, so well I did a couple of jobs early this morning, but I'm done for the day working. Now here, see I can't get the steel wool in those crevices, so what I do is I just take a little brass brush and just do that. I don't see a problem with that. Look at the difference. I don't see nothing wrong with that. Works good. Yeah, I could tell a little difference, but I wanted to check. That's another thing with steel wool, it leaves these tiny fibers everywhere. I think there is a maker's mark on here. I don't remember. I can barely see the maker's mark. Go ahead. I think I've talked myself into doing another coat on this. I just want to see. Just want to see. Okay, what I'm going to do here. Where's my man? I, I need another brass, little brass brush, a better one than this one. Here, no, that ain't gonna work. I'm gonna have to use this. Yeah, that's better. All right, let me clean this mess up, put another coat on. I'll come back to it in a second. Thought I'd show you real quick. Second coat, I don't know if you can tell the difference. That's the second coat. This is the first coat that I've polished off. So, looks like it's going to darken more and I wasn't expecting but I won't show you hope can you see I think you can yeah it looks like it's taking a darker film all right I'll finish this and we'll see what it looks like well before I coat anything with oil and finish up I'm thinking that 
I'm going to try to peen this over just to make sure it holds because if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to try to make a bolt and I can already see problems. I wonder if I take a chisel and just score it over. Let me try that. I'll be right back. All right, I did it. I peened it over. Took a chisel and a punch. Finally was able to get it to where I want it. It's straight. Oh, I'll tell you what. For it, let's, let's, uh, I want, it's still warm outside. It's hot, so I want to coat this with some oil. Let it sit out. This oil, three in one, gives it a little sheen, darkens it a little bit. I think, anyways. You guys can try it if you like it. If it works for you, fine. It works for me. I always tell everybody if you find something you like and you use it, until somebody can prove something better. This is what I'm doing. The only thing I didn't do was I didn't did not blue this part of it, this washer. But the blacking on this came off, so beating on it, so. Oh well. I'm just using my finger just to rub everything down with some light coat of oil. Not gonna hurt anything. It seems to give it more of a, I don't know if you'd say a sheen or shine or uh, darkens it a little bit. I'm going to have to find some more three in one. I hope the Ace store in town's got it because all Walmart doesn't. Hell, our Walmart's lucky to have food. It's a white trash dump, is what it is. All right. Pretty well coated. So, and you can see it's well coated, but leave it outside and then uh, in the heat and then overnight I'll bring it in here after once it gets dark but uh, that Sun just bakes it all right let uh, I guess tomorrow the end of the video all right ladies and gentlemen brought these from outside and the only spot where the oils left is right under the slip and these are Eagle, I can't remember Eagle brand or Eagle Claw uh, lot, uh, square nut pliers. I can't remember what they're called now. Anyways, look at the jaws on these things. These are cool. I like them. Uh, there is, if you look real closely, there's a little bit of oil left in there in the gaps. So, no oil on the handles, in really nice condition. These, uh, I call these dinosaur pliers. They just remind me of a dinosaur on the big, the big head like that. And these things are heavy. They, they feel, I don't know, the steel quality on these. Where's them other pliers? Hang on, here it is. There's probably about a 50 year difference in the metal and some of this is not pitting that you see here. It's, I think some of that is manufacturing. They're not the greatest uh, forged or however they're made, I don't know, but I like these pliers. I think they're cool. These are okay, I mean, that's, these are something you stick in your pocket. This, the way they're designed, I th I'll probably wind up using these on hose clamps and stuff like that, just because of the bite on it. I like that. I like that. That is, I, it's got a, I, for something, I like this bite right here. 
I don't know, I'm fascinated with a pair of pliers. <laughs> you guys can laugh at me all you want. I think this is cool. I'm really excited. A uh, pair of pliers turned out really nice. The bluing, the bluing on this one is more black. Uh, and that's another thing with this bluing that I use. And I think it goes for the other stuff too that I've used. Uh, matter of fact, let me grab it. Well, maybe, yeah, here it is. I, I like this bluing too, but this you have to rinse. So this I do not have to rinse. So that's the reason I use this brand. And the, the color on some different metals, on the metal, it takes differently, which I find that fascinating. I don't know enough about metal, er, metal I can't pronounce that. I don't know enough about different types of metals and how it's forged, how it's made. I'm sure everything takes differently. It's just like when you're polishing, you can tell uh, some steel polishes so easily and then some doesn't. Uh, so anyways, ladies and gentlemen, think of my, I think I paid three or four dollars for this. Let's say four dollars. I don't care, it's a good pair of pliers. That, I can grab something with that. I, I like the design. Uh, more than likely, I'm gonna use this for hose clamps mostly, uh, just the way it's shaped. I do have a hose clamp pliers and these are similar to that. These are just good old pliers right here. There's, there you get, there again, buying a cheap junky tool and bringing it back and make it useful. You don't have to have all brand new tools. You can find stuff like this and use it. And I'm sure this is not original. Uh, I looked online and there's other of, of these for sale and they have a nut there. Uh, the only thing is I, I don't have the capabilities to make this and, or make it useful. I've tried it and it never works very well for me. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think. You like my new acquisition? <laughs> I think it's cool. I, I'm excited. I, yeah, yeah, it's fun. This finding old tools and bringing them back, make them useful. That's fun for me. So ladies and gentlemen, give me thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe if you like. My channel is about finding old junk tools and bringing them back and making them useful again. Uh, comment if you like and oh speaking of comments uh, some days it takes me some time it takes me days to return your comments so bear with me I do work a lot this time of year 14 15 hour days and uh, all I like to do when I get home after them long days is eat shower and sleep so yes I just I don't have time to I don't even look at the computer. There's days I don't even bother with it. So those of you guys that leave comments, I appreciate. Some of you guys, I learn stuff from you. Your, your comments are welcome anytime, even criticism. Uh, I don't mind some of the stuff. I understand some of you guys would like to see these ground down, polished and look nice and brand new, but I'm not into that. I just want my tools usable and look good. You know, serviceable, I guess is the word. All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a good evening. Thank you now.